Hello and welcome to this tutorial on routing protocols. This is an introduction to routing protocols and we're going to figure out what they are and what they do. And you can't really talk about routing, the subject of routing, without including a good discussion on routing protocols. And they can be pretty complicated in some in some instances, um, but the, the fundamental uh, purpose of routing protocols is pretty simple and straightforward. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at um, how routers actually learn routes. How do they populate their routing table in order to know where to send traffic? And that will lead us into a discussion of some of the basic characteristics of routing protocols, what they do for us. And then finally, we're going to take a look at just a, a pretty simple example of routing protocols in action um, to really illustrate um, their function in the routing process overall. Okay, so let's get started. And we'll begin by looking at how routes are learned by the router. So there's a couple different approaches, and we'll start with local routes. So local routes mean routes that are connected to the router itself. So let's say this is router A, and it has two network segments connected to it. So when router A um, looks to populate its route table, the first thing it'll do it, is it'll look at itself, and it'll say, well, what am I connected to? What do I know about already? And it'll take those routes and populate its routing table. So those are referred to as local routes or directly connected subnets. You've heard that perhaps as well. Um, all of that information, which is in the configuration on the router, is put into the route table. So that's the first um, approach to learning routes. The second one is a static approach. And by that we mean a network administrator can log into router A and manually configure a route that it might otherwise not know about. So to illustrate that, let's say this is router B on the bottom, and it has a particular subnet here. But router A has no way to know about it. So you could log into router A and go to the command line and enter a configuration that says, if you need to get to this network, go here. Send a packet out this interface here. So that would be a manual configuration, and these are referred to as static routes. And that static route is then taken um, when it's entered into router A, and it's put into the route table. So now it's, it's part of the route table on router A. Well, that works pretty well if you have a very specific purpose in mind, um, or if you have a very small network. It doesn't work very well using static routes when you have a very large network, uh, a complicated network. Um, it just it doesn't scale well. Pretty soon you have too many routes to enter. The the administrative upkeep will just be too big. You can make mistakes. You can forget to add something new. Or every time a change is made on the network, you have to potentially update a lot of static routes all over the network. So eventually it's just not feasible to do it that way. So that brings us to the dynamic approach. So routes can be added to a router's route table dynamically. And this is where routing protocols come into play. So let's say we didn't want to add this static route to router A. But instead, we configured both router A and router B with a routing protocol, like OSPF, for instance. Well, now each router, by using this protocol, this routing protocol, they can exchange information dynamically. So router A, through OSPF, talking to router B, would learn about this subnet down here. And likewise, router B would learn about these two subnets connected to router A. So this is a dynamic conversation. So when changes are made on B, or let's say a new network is added to A, it automatically updates B. So it's a dynamic conversation, and there's a lot less overhead, a lot less administrative overhead than configuring hundreds, perhaps, of static routes on each router. So those are the three methods that are generally used in order to populate a router's route table. And since we ended on dynamic routing protocol, uh, dy the dynamic method, let's go ahead and look at routing protocols, because routing protocols are dynamic. So let's drill down into that a little bit more. So the basic characteristics and functions of routing protocols are, are, are this. Routing protocols basically enable routers to update their routing tables. 
And you could be a little more specific and say that routing protocols enable routers to exchange route information. And then they take that information and then they update their routing, their routing table. So they're sharing information between each other. And a few example routing protocols could be RIP, OSPF, and EIGRP. There are others as well, but these are very common. And so we mentioned earlier that there's a dynamic way of exchanging information. Well, routing protocols are dynamic. And that's part of their value is that they keep information between routers up to date. So when a change occurs and one router knows about it, it informs all of the other routers. And so that means if you add something new to the network or if you take something away or if there's a failure, information is shared rapidly. And so everyone's up to date. And because of that, networks are a lot more efficient. And also, there's a lot less to do as a network administrator. You don't have to log in each time and manually change a route table. So it's a huge benefit there in that dynamic nature of routing protocols. On more complex networks, there could sometimes be multiple ways to get to a single destination. And so routing protocols provide a very valuable service in that they, they will choose the best route if multiple routes exist. And that's actually... And a, a common scenario because you want redundancy in your network, um, but you don't necessarily want to always use every path. You want to use the best path. And if, if that best path, path fails, then sure, let's go ahead and use one of the alternate paths. But let's try to use the best one um, all the time. And so that's what routing protocols do for us. They choose the best route. And then finally, related to that, routing protocols help us avoid routing loops. So it will uh, ensure that we do not route packets in a way such that they're never going to get to the real destination. Um, they, they will prevent packets from just being routed around in a circle on the network and never really being delivered. Routing loops can be very dangerous to networks and can actually cripple them. So routing protocols provide that very beneficial service to us as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at another example of routing protocols in action. So in this network, we have two routers, and they're connected with a T1 line. And also, each router has a local area network. So just to go through what we covered, router A is going to look locally and see all of its connected routes. And after it does that, it's going to add them to its routing table. Likewise, router B is going to do the same thing. It'll see it has a connected network here, and it'll go ahead and add that to its routing table. And so that would be the end of it, unless there are any static routes. Well, in this scenario, let's say we don't have any, but router A could have one, and if it did, it would add it to its routing table, and B would as well if it did. So then let's move on to a routing protocol, because that's how these two are going to learn about what the other one knows. So let's say we're using RIP in order to exchange information. We don't go into the details of the messaging, the RIP messaging in this tutorial, but let's just say that router B and router A will start to send messages to each other using the RIP protocol in order to tell each other what they know about. So now router A is going to know about this network here, and it's going to add it to its route table. And in fact, when it says, if I have a packet destined for this particular network, do this, and it's going to say, well, doing this means routing it out this interface, because it knows it learned that route from router B. Router B is going to do the same thing. It's going to now know about this network from the messages from router A. It'll add it to its route table. And when it sees a packet destined for that network, it'll say, OK, let me send it out that interface, because I know router A has that network. And that is the basic concept of how routers will share routing information with each other. We also talked about routers choosing the best route, and that's really important because in networks you have redundancy, which means you have multiple ways to get to the same place. Well, you want to use the best route and only use the backup routes when you need them, perhaps as a failure of the primary route. So let's look at an example of that. Let's say we have another router here, and this is router C. And router C is connected to each of these two, and it's also using a routing protocol, and it's exchanging routes with them as well. Well, now router A has two ways to get to the networks on router B. It learned networks directly from router B, but it could also learn about that same network from router C. 
And so the routing protocol running on router A would then go through a series of decisions and it'll decide based on some metrics and some more detailed information of which one it should choose. And then it would go ahead and choose that one and put it into its routing table. And so let's say this is our primary link to get to networks on router B. So if this PC wants to route to one of these guys, router A will get that traffic and it'll look at its route table, know it needs to go out this interface, and it'll route the packet that way. If there's a failure, let's say this link dies and it's down hard, well then the routing protocol would go ahead and put in a backup route, the same route, but it learned it from a different source, right? It learned it from router C as well. So the route table would then be updated with new information. So the next time this PC wanted to route over to here, router A would have a backup route, and it would route it to router C. Router C could then route it to router B. So there's redundancy, and in order to make the best use of that redundancy, routing protocols will choose the best route in order to be more efficient. Okay, so let's go ahead and summarize the concepts we covered. So we know there are three ways a router can learn about routes. Locally, statically, ones that we configure, and dynamically. And dynamically brings us to the conversation of routing protocols. And routing protocols, that's one huge benefit of, of what they deliver to us, is that they have dynamic conversations with all of their neighbors, and they exchange information all the time for us. That means that the information is up to date throughout the network. So it's always, it's always current. And that's important because changes happen on networks, especially network failures, and we need to let everyone know when that happens. Likewise, we also talked about the best route if a router has more than one option to get to a particular destination. The routing protocol will determine which is the best one and use that one. And then finally, routing protocols will avoid loops. So it will prevent us and the network, really, from sending packets around and around without ever getting to the proper destination. And that's it. That is everything we need to talk about for this introduction to routing protocols. Thanks for watching.